Coming up on the Paranormal After Party. Some of us have been here before. I almost thought I saw something behind the bed. Like an old lady that didn't have her teeth in, so it's sunken in around here, so the jaw was protruded. It almost looked like she had a scarf. Yeah. December 25th, that's Christmas. Feels like someone's staring. We are headed to Virginia. Neither one of us got much sleep. My grandson was born uh, 1228 this morning. But we're headed out, we just stopped. We're pretty much four hours in, three hours in, about an eight hour trip. Uh, we stopped off to get some refreshments, a little breakfast, and we're gonna be headed out. It's 28 minutes, we're sorry, 18 miles, but if I'm going, if I do 90 miles an hour, so how long <laughs> does it take to get there? Boom! Understood, yeah, no worries, yeah. Perfect, perfect. Sounds good, because I you think the trailer, a uh, not a little one, I think a, a longer one. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. All right, bye-bye. I will scratch this ticket and see if we win. <laughs> Maybe we just turn the <laughs> around. <laughs> here we go. Come on, let me uh, leave something to my grandson here. Oh, hipped it in his fleet. There we go. Hey. <laughs> Who needs those stinking roads? We don't need no stinking roads. <laughs> While checking into the hotel, we learned that the receptionist had stories of her own about the location in which we would be investigating tonight. She asked that we would keep these stories private. Maybe we'll take you on a ghost hunt one day. Oh, please do. <laughs> my number. God, that, that stuff is exciting to me. <laughs> After getting settled in at the hotel, we found out that the rest of the team was stuck in traffic. We ventured to the Windsor Castle in hopes to get some more information before starting our investigations tonight. Tracy, you are the curator here. Yes, I'm the curator of the Ottawa County Museum and for the town of Smithfield, so I kind of take care of the information and history of this historic building. Can you tell me a little bit of the history uh, about the building? The building itself was thought to be started in 1740. Arthur Smith Jr. came from England in 1637 and patented the land that this sits on, which was about 1,400 acres. Um, recently, there's been some archaeology done, and they think that the original house, probably built in 1634, is right next to this existing building. Now, the name Smith, uh, obviously Smithfield, where does Windsor come in? Well, um, Arthur Smith IV was the one who drew out the town of Smithfield and gave the land to the town to create the town of Smithfield. But this building was not called Windsor Castle until after the Civil War when it was bought by uh, the Jordan family, or as they pronounce it here, Jordan family. Um, so it listed in the land patent that it was the house in Windsor Castle. So that was the first time it was referred to that and the only time in uh, public documents. It was called that in another private documents they can't find out um, what, it, what it was called. So some of the later owners in the 1950s kind of picked up the Windsor Castle as a moniker to kind of show off the house a little bit. What is it used for now? 
Um, the house is actually um, empty currently. They're uh, trying to decide what type of interpretation they'd like to do for it. So they're doing archaeology around here. They're also trying to preserve the historic outbuildings that are to the period. The land itself has turned into a public park. And there's a walking trail around, a dog trail. Uh, they still farm some of the land um, here. The town and nonprofit Windsor Castle Group is trying to uh, raise money to fix the house there. At the museum, we're all for putting it back into its original form and interpreting in it, but it is hard to get visitors through, so the town is looking at a variety of things. They've actually rented out the front area that was where the slave quarters would have been uh, to a winery, and they're growing grapes there. So. On the property itself, um, you said there's other structures mm -hmm. out there. Um, now, what, what structures uh, are still standing on the property? Right in the immediate area of the house, where there is a, a kitchen, um, there's a smokehouse, there's a number of barns. The history of Smithfield must have started out here in that, that smokehouse, huh? Well, um, I always like to go into pigs are the perfect colonists. The early settlers brought them over. They let them run wild. They can take care of themselves. They don't have any predators. So they have an uh, easy source of protein. The English actually put salt on their hand to, you know, to preserve it. And then the native peoples actually hung the meat in their houses, their yahakas, and the smoke from that preserve. So they combined both of those processes to create what we know as fulfilled ham today. And there's records as far back as 1740 of them exporting ham bacon and lard out of here and that's one reason that Arthur Smith started the town was they needed a place to charge taxes for exports so yeah there would have been pigs everybody had their own smokehouse all the families had their own recipes you've had tour groups walk through the building mm -hmm. has anybody ever told you they've had some sort of abnormal experiences here well, I do. Uh, one lady mentioned to me, and she actually showed me a picture on her phone, that when um, there's a walking trail that goes around the park, and it actually goes out in the front in, of this building, and she looked over here and saw somebody standing on the porch of the building, and nobody was here. Uh, for me personally, I actually will walk here for exercise in the evening after work, and when you walk by the graveyard, you can kind of feel like... Um, something's, you know, behind you, following you until you get past the graveyard on down the trail a little bit, so. Inside the building, we're going to be investigating, obviously, inside and out. Where would you recommend we start? Um, I would think the English basement, because the English basement in the heyday of this house would have been a hubbub of activity. There are also, the archaeologist feels that, that the English basement was probably attached to the original house's basement at one point. There's a spot, so that's kind of an interesting little portal right there. Okay, well, we're going to do an investigation tonight, and uh, we'll fill you in on what we find. Yeah, I look forward to uh, seeing what your results are. Thank you so right. much. I Thank appreciate you. your time. Thank you. When we return, the team arrives, and we start our investigation. Some of us have been here before. I said, see you next Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I just gotta ask you a favor, please. Just let them do their job first. Oh my God, so freaked out right now. They're talking to us, so we're doing good things. Nobody? You say nobody? The female said nobody. Well, the results speak for themselves. Keep doing what we're doing, have fun with the investigations. Today we are joined by RTL Paranormal with Ray, Beth, Susan, Lindsay, and you guys have investigated here previously. Briefly give me a little piece of what went on here. I was in the basement with Lindsay and we were doing an EVP session. The atmosphere in the basement was kind of off. It felt kind of heavy downstairs. And we got a couple of EVPs down there. As far as I'm concerned, as a class A. The girls have their own actual physical experience down in the basement. It was me and two other girls, and we were all following in a line, getting ready to go in one of the rooms, and in between me and one of the girls, a branch fell. We have no clue where it came from. I was in the basement as well. I caught a quick EVP, and it clearly said Smithfield. It was a whisper and it was like it was speaking into the microphone. You guys have never been to the cemetery, right? Correct. Right. Whoever's brave enough to join me. Ray, 
You volunteer. I saw you raise your hand, man. Come on. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll get some of the experiences you guys had. You know. Great. <laughs> December 25th, that's Christmas Day. Yeah. Christmas Day, and there's your Masonic 21. symbol right there on the top. It died on Christmas Day. Something was just saying something. Something was talking. You have some devices on the top of the tombstone. Uh, please feel free to go near them or communicate through them. They're not going to hurt you. We mean no disrespect. We just want to communicate with you in whatever way you feel comfortable. Is there anybody that roams these, this cemetery area? <laughs> well, he's out here already. Yeah. See, he keeps hitting orange. How many people are here? We are going to the basement with Ray and Beth. They both had experiences down there. Gonna take Flip down, do a little EVP session, and see what we catch. Once uh, we got about here, I started feeling heaviness. Um, when Lindsay and I came down here, we noticed that it was a different feeling down here in this area than it was over there. It's a little bit more heavy. So I started taking pictures around the room, and one of the pictures was this window here. I zoomed in on my camera and I noticed that there was an anomaly of the window. So I started looking at it and it was very de defined. It almost looked like an old lady that didn't have her teeth in. So it's sunken in around here. So the jaw was protruded. It almost looked like she had a scarf. Mm -hmm. um, I showed it to Johnny earlier today and he was pretty impressed with the picture. So hopefully we can get something here tonight. Was this where the branch was too? Or no, no, the no, branch no, was no. over okay. there. Okay. Beth, you got something on you? I'm just listening. I'm looking. Does he have some money? Does he have some money? No, you spun around pretty fast, though. Sorry. Just making sure I don't miss anything. Well, we'll know if it comes through the door behind Joe's then. <laughs> if you remember, my name is Ray, and this is Beth. We've been here a couple of times before to speak with you. Can you let us know that you're here by making some sort of a noise? or maybe saying your name as loud as you can. Now we learned from the interviews that this was pretty much a hub of action during the time when this house was vibrant. A lot of things going on in this basement. Are the things still going on? You got noise behind Justin and Beth. That sound was behind you too. No? It's weird because this is a tight basement, so... It's weird because this is a tight basement, so... It's weird because this is a tight basement, so... The sound can bounce, but I definitely, it sounded like over there. Okay. See the meat hook? Yeah. Would the old lady be here that Ray captured the image of near the window? I just want to move over to this side of the room because I want to be able to watch that side at the same time. Me moving my feet. Feels like someone's staring. That's what I'm saying. I was I guess about to like say, staring there's at something us. like in the area behind where he's at. So I let's feel, move over. I feel like, like you're being watched. Yeah, I feel a little walked down. I feel like I'm just... Ooh, what the f was that? Touch Something just like pushed me. It's just me. Turn around. I'm going crazy over there. Is anybody over there? Yeah. Well, is there anybody with us here? 
Give us a little sign. There's definitely somebody here. <laughs> <laughs> One spot, right? Mm -hmm. This is a little weird. Right? It feels yeah, like it's like it's weird. uneven. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now I don't know if it's just because of this moss or, or what. I don't know. Kind of makes you feel like you're sinking into it. Right. Yeah. Right. That's what I was feeling. Like off balance. Yeah. I was like, whoa. <laughs> All right. There's a piece of equipment on the floor. If you get close to it, the lights will start to intensify and the sound will get louder. Can you make one light light for us? Well, is there something about this spot? Is there, is there anything significant to this area or the way this tree is with the trees around it? Does it feel like a meeting spot to you? Come on, if you don't respond, we're gonna leave. What can you tell us about these people? All right, we're going to go back inside. We'll probably send another crew out here later if you want to talk to them. Go to the other side of the room. Mike, stand right here. you walking upstairs, can you come a little bit closer? Come a little bit closer? Come a little bit closer? Still here. It's loud, too. Can you come to the top of the stairs for me, please? Mike, want to take this and just go check out, just to show there's nobody up there? Well, we all stay down here and talk about it. It's safe. Okay, so we were hearing shuffling sound. It wasn't heavy footsteps. It wasn't like the, you know, the double step, nothing like that. But it was more of like a shuffling sound. So we were 98% sure the building was empty. We sent Mike up just to make sure it was empty. And Mike? It's empty. It's empty. Almost, because as soon as I got anywhere near the source, then it stopped, so. But when you were up there, you heard it? Yeah, and then I started walking towards the room, and then they stopped. The big room that we were in earlier? No. No? Further back. Oh, uh, the other one. All right, come on back down here. We'll see if they uh, move around a little more. Crazy. Yeah, that was weird because he came down through there, so it was probably the step almost sounded like a mumbling. Mm -hmm. You caught that time? Yeah. Three times. Yeah, it was right above here. The fact that they stopped when you walked up there would lead me to believe it's intelligent. Intelligent, yeah. Because if it was residual, it would just keep going unless mm -hmm. it was just a real happy coincidence that it just happened to end when you walked up. Alright, now I gotta go up. Take a camera with you. Good luck. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> we'll stay down here. Who's walking around up here? Battlefield Bed and Breakfast. The inn is an 1809 Fieldstone farmhouse on the Gettysburg Battlefield with 10 beautiful guest rooms that reflect the history of the historic property. The B&B has two wedding venues, wedding gardens, 30 acres of nature preserve, and is a popular historic tourist destination. The farm was the site of a cavalry charge and a cavalry camp dog friendly and family friendly. Book your stay today.
on audio. So if you heard it uh, audible or? I did, when I came upstairs, I heard five or six syllables audible. Hopefully the recorder can caught it. And what was strange about this session was there was so much going on away from us that we never reviewed audio. I, I never played anything back on the spot, which is usually what I do. But we, so much stuff was happening up here while we were down there that we had to keep moving around. And it, it, it seemed to be just staying like one floor away from us where, you know, it's just checking us out. But I mean, it's nothing, nothing threatening. It's just, it almost seems like you're kind of, kind of hiding back a little bit just to see what we're doing. Yeah. So we're in the front parlor and Lindsay's had some experiences here before. Um, she's felt like things are a little bit off in this room, a little heavy. So uh, we have a variety of devices on the floor and we're going to try ghost box and see if we can communicate with whatever's around here. If there are any spirits in the room, you can communicate with us through the white noise on this ghost box. Is there anyone here with us? Can you say one of our names? It's Johnny. Can you say Johnny? There's three devices here that you can talk to us through. <coughs> Excuse me. Did you live here at one time? This is what was happening to the guy downstairs. Really? Yeah. I heard footsteps up here. It wasn't a creek. It, it wasn't, wasn't like a floor here. It was like the like yeah. sole of a shoe hitting wood. It was it was like a boot or something. Are you here with us right now? Here. You can light up any of these things on the floor if you if you're near them. You don't have to stay away. We don't mean you any harm. We're just here to learn more about you. Yeah, but that's why it's just us. I, I hear every so often one or two footsteps. Like, what, it doesn't sound like it's, it sounds like footsteps. All right, we're staying in front of the tenant farmhouse on the grounds of Windsor Castle Park. Um, this has been the subject of some online videos where they catch people in the upper windows, playing with the shades. We're just going to set up a recorder in here for a little while and see if we can catch anything. I've seen movies that ended very badly in this flip. Alright. What we're going to do... See if we can prop the camera on the windowsill. Facing this way. And we'll put the recorder on the stairs with a K2. Mm. Face the screen up this way so we can see what's okay. There's no Beth, Ray, Mike, Flip, and Jennifer. In case something reaches out, that's good. Hey, we came a long way to talk to you. Will you be able to give us your name? or what year it is for you? Arthur Smith, how many other members of your family are buried here with you? 
got some noise from across the water. Yeah, I don't think the recorder's picking that up. It's picking up something there for your question. Arthur, what would you like to see done with your house? I guess whatever you guys saw on this hill walking up is gone now. I saw the shadow, somebody saw it. Well, I was on the other side, like where the where the uh, buildings are over here. Right. And I was waiting for you guys to come out of the house, and I could have sworn I saw something dark moving toward the lake. So I was kind of watching it, and I, either my eyes were playing tricks on me or I actually saw it walking toward it in... As it was going toward the lake, it got the, the it was like the shadow got smaller and smaller. And the moon's gonna play tricks on, on your eyes a little bit. Okay, we'll also note that we have two K2s sitting here, and neither of them are lighting up. There's no other equipment near them. The ghost box is there, but it's off. And the speaker's off as well. The last group of individuals that were here. They mentioned maybe two lovers meeting up at night somewhere around here. Or one of them you? Did you actually meet them? Or do you show up looking for them and they're never here? I almost thought I saw something behind Beth, but there's a reflection of lights on the water. So it could have been something Locking it out for a second. Alright, report is on. Cemetery, we have Beth Gray, Mike Smith, and Jennifer. Come close, kids. <laughs> After finishing the investigation in the cemetery, Mike and Flip proceed back to the farmhouse. On their way back to the farmhouse, you can hear movement. Like the real faint? Yeah. Yes. Enough for it to pick up on the recording. <laughs> 